Let's take a look at an incredibly useful temperature and humidity control module available from your favourite Chinese supplier. And what makes this module quite special is its versatility. The heat side can be used for heating or cooling and the humidity side can be used for humidifying or dehumidifying control systems. And the sensor, to avoid all the complications of humidity sensing, they're using a dedicated sensor, a very standard chip inside this remote module that then communicates with data to the actual processor. So if you're looking on program instructions for this, I will put a full guide down in the description down below because there's not a lot of information about it online. But fortunately, it's very straightforward. You've got a 12 volt supply going into it in the middle here. It does have polarity protection. This is good. And you've got two relays and each relay has a normally open uh, set of dry contacts with no voltage on them. I don't recommend running high loads like heaters or loads like, say, compressors or stuff like that with a high inrush current. If you want to drive those, use the small relay with its contact to switch a 12 volt supply to an external relay. Now for programming this, it's very straightforward. You've got two buttons here for the heat and cooling side and you've got two buttons here for the humidity side. Of those two pairs of buttons, the left one is the temperature the relay will turn on and the right one is the temperature the relay will turn off. And depending on where the, whether the second temperature you put in is higher or lower will determine whether it's a heating or cooling application. So in this case, uh, pressing the button briefly, it sh shows that it's going to turn on 25 degrees Celsius and press it again, it shows it's going to turn off at 30 degrees Celsius. So that is for um, heating. And that's why it's lit at the moment, because it is actually, it's a low temperature, so, so it's wanting to heat. Likewise, this one, it's designed to turn on at 50% humidity and off at 70% humidity. So it's off because it's already reached that, because I've been handling this and it's raised the humidity of the unit. It reacts very quickly. Uh, the chip in there is quite interesting. To change the settings, you uh, press and hold, say I want to change this one and it starts flashing and then you can use the left button for up and holding it will make it scan up quickly or you can just do it with one or two stabs just to get it to the fine value and likewise once it's stopped flashing you can then if you wish you can set the off temperature by holding this one down and running it down if you want or up if you want just whatever you want to set it to it takes a bit of faffing around it's quite uh, tricky with these buttons for setting those uh, values but once it's done it's done if you really mess up uh, just press all the buttons at once and hold them I, this isn't documented there is no manual uh, hold all of them and it will display all eights let go and it does revert to factory defaults now uh, i think i've covered just about everything here you've got a little red led for this relay a green led for this relay that's more or less it right tell you what, i'll put this out the way now and we shall look at the sensor and then the schematic of the unit. So here is what the sensor looks like inside there. It's a very big circuit board, but it's a very small chip. This is a chip here, it's an SHT20, and the main requirement is that it has a decoupling capacitor in the vicinity and it is designed for 3.3 volts. You've got four connections, you've got the zero volts, which is connected to this large ground plane and also a ground plane on the other side, which will uh, basically provide some screening for the chip so it doesn't pick up uh, noise from adjacent electrical equipment. So you've got your 0 volt, your 3.3 volts, and then you've got data and clock, and it is bi-directional. Uh, the processor sends requests for data, and then this sends data back. Uh, things worth mentioning. Contaminants and soldering. You want to be careful not to contaminate this little module. It's one of these things that if you solder it, don't start dousing it with uh, isopropyl alcohol or anything like that. That can actually damage the little membrane in here. Um, soldering, you have to be very careful not to solder it. Just don't linger with the solder iron too long. It's just designed for a quick tap of the solder iron to solder it quite quickly. Um, the pull rate is quite interesting. The temptation might be to have a very high update speed on your processor by sending a request for the temperature and humidity continually and just going pull, 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 pull. But you're better not doing that because each time you do that, it wakes this little chip up and it starts processing and testing the sensor.
and it actually generates a little bit of heat itself and it can actually skew its temperature settings. So you're better actually just pulling it just when needed, just very occasionally, just uh, refresh the new values. Let's take a look at the main circuit board. You've already seen the module from this side, and it's very straightforward. It's got the turner blocks, the volt-free contacts going to this relay, the volt-free contacts going to this relay, and then it does have polarity protection on the 12-volt DC input supply. A little bit of smoothing there. It's got the two seven-segment displays, which are standard modules. Note that it says this is module HCW-M452. It's also sold under the name XH-M452. The main thing is if you search on your favourite Chinese site for Humidity M452, you'll find these. And the cost is typically £8. Beware of listings that seem really cheap. They may not include a really important bit. Some of them... Uh, just list this sensor. Some of them just list the module. You're better getting the two of them together. There's very little difference in price and uh, it would be quite, you know, it just simplifies things getting it all together. And there are the four buttons at the bottom. Uh, temperature setting on, uh, on really on temperature, really off temperature and the humidity really on, uh, on humidity and really off humidity. Right, let's take a look at the other side. And it does have a mystery bit that had me perplexed. It took a bit of reverse engineering. Um, I shall zoom a little bit closer than that. I, I zoomed out a bit more than I was expecting there. Oh, that'll do. And I'll turn the power supply off as well. So here's the incoming supply down here. There are the relay contacts. You can see there's sort of slightly reinforced tracks just going straight over there, but I don't recommend using the relays for switching high loads. The input for the 12 volt supply goes through a diode for polarity protection, and then the 12 volts go straight to the relays and also to the resistor and LED arrangement across the relays. There's the transistors that switch the relays, and there are uh, back EMF spike suppression diodes across the coils. Then it gets a bit weird. There is a 3.3 volt voltage regulator with its little stack of capacitors and a 5 volt regulator with its stack of capacitors. And the 5 volt regulator powers the microcontroller and this uh, SIM4HC164D uh, shift register, which basically takes zero data in, converts it to parallel, and it, it does the uh, eight uh, segments of the seven segment display in the decimal point. And then the processor just switches each digit on in turn via this uh, 47 ohm resistor. Here is the port that goes out to the sensor and this circuitry here had me so puzzled for a while because it was new to me. I've never seen it done this way before. It is a level shifter circuitry, but it's bi-directional level shifter circuitry that can convert between the 5 volt logic levels to the 3.3 volt levels. Um, after that, and I'll show you that in the schematic, just the buttons and that's it. Nothing else, all the debouncing's built in and a little programming port for the factory that makes them. Right, over to the schematic and we can explore it. And I have abbreviated this because a lot of it is the same circuitry repeated multiple times. So, here's the 12 volt supply come in. There's a large protection diode. That's a great thing. I'm glad to do that. There is a smoothing capacitor. It's hidden from view, but I saw the 25 volts and the value was hidden from view, but it started the two given its size, 25 volt, I'd say 220 microfarad, it kind of fits that. Then the 12 volt rail goes over to the relays and the relays are switched by these transistors from the processor via a little 2K base resistor. It's got an optional position in here as if they're basically considering that they might use MOSFETs at some point. The relay coil has the diode across it uh, to shunt the collapsing field spike when the transistor turns off. And then it's got a resistor and LED. 2K resistor for the green LED, which is a gallium phosphide one, uh, low efficiency and 4.7K, I think it was, for the red LED. Then we get the two regulators. And interestingly, and I've not shown all the capacitors here, uh, interestingly, that they've both got a 20 ohm resistor in series with them, which will limit in rush, I suppose, act like a fuse as well, I suppose, really. I'm not really sure of that. Uh, but it will also, most importantly, help dissipate some of the power. For any current that flows through this, this resistor will take a lot of the strain off these regulators by dissipating a bit of heat itself and dropping part of the voltage. So the 5 volts feeds the microcontroller, which has 
four buttons just pulling to the zero volt rail and it's also got the display here with the zero to parallel converter the sim for hc144 classic uh, cmos style uh, ttl chip um, but it's got data and clock and it sends the data for the display out for each digit so it'll, for the first digit it will send the data out to represent that number and then it will turn that digit on via one of six resistors here from direct pins that turns that digit on then it displays that number then it shifts the data for the next digit in and then it lights the next digit up and it just basically keeps scanning across the display um there is the the sht 20 uh combined temperature and humidity module that saves a lot of complexity because measuring humidity from a membrane requires AC sensing. It's very complex, very hard to do with conventional circuitry. It's nice they put it on one tiny cheap component. Here's a 3.3 volt supply and here is the freaky bit. There's two of these. These are bi-directional level shifters. What these do, they use a single MOSFET, a BSS123 and there's a slight difference to the usual way this is shown in uh, schematics. They've got a 10k resistor to the gate, but a lot of them just tie it straight to the 3.3 volt rail. But the main thing is that normally both these pins are pulled up to the uh, appropriate log uh, power rails. So the logic level high is 3.3 volts here and it's 5 volt here. When one of these devices asserts authority over the bi-directional bi communication and say takes the this low it basically couples it over so that it basically pulls this pin low as well i'm not quite sure that works don't really know how it works but they both can go to the zero volt rail and the mosfet is uh, basically just acting as a separator for this of higher voltage uh, supplies but in short that this chip sees it toggling between 5 volts and 0 volts and this one sees it toggling between 3.3 volts and 0 volts because you can't put a 5 volt logic level straight over to a 3.3 volt chip and if you try putting 3.3 volt logic levels to a 5 volt chip it may not actually provide reliable um, detecting of that logic level um, and that is it it's a fairly straightforward circuit <clears throat> so I will include the full instructions for programming this down below because it's one of these things that these modules are very good but they never seem to have the data for programming them online um but it's very neat very functional i like the fact it can be configured say to run a heater or an air conditioner or a humidifier or a dehumidifier just by uh, the difference between the temperatures and the the start and the stop uh, modes but there we have it the m452 humidifier module or humidity module um if you head down to the description i'll include any data that i've forgotten and also the full instructions on how to program this very neat indeed